yesterday evening we started with this team green And in simple terms, what I'm trying to tell you is the man is a planting of God. And there is something about creation. Creation is created in a way that it's interdependent. If you started the story of creation, you discover that everything that was created became like a base for what was created further on it. For example, before man was ever made, the sun was made, the moon was made, animals came forth, and greens and plants sprang on the face of the earth so that man could have a base to relate with. But in the study of biodiversity in, in study, we, just, we call plants a strange name. We call them principal producers. They seem to be the closest to God, in quote, to be the life giver, not necessarily the consumer. Every other thing consumed or takes to leave. You understand what I'm saying? So what we are looking at here in summary is John chapter 5 verse 26. John chapter 5 verse 26. For as the father has life in himself, so he has granted the son to have life in in himself. Maybe I should look at verse 27. And has given him authority to execute judgment also because he's the son of man. There is a type of life that is in God that is not dependent on any other thing. It's God's life generated by God himself. The father has life in himself. That life is not built on another life. In fact, every other life find their life in it. The Bible spoke about Jesus. The Bible said, He is the light that lighteneth every man that entered the world. And that light is the life of man. Are you following me? It's a self. It is what is in the Father and is in the Son. In fact, the Bible told us in the book of 1 Corinthians 15 that the first Adam was made a living being. But the last Adam was a life-given spirit. Which means if it encounters death, it can bring forth life there. Are you following me? And so, and I told us to, yesterday that the mission of the devil is to create dryness in the world. The Bible says, he's the one, Isaiah 14 was speaking about Lucifer. He says, he's the one that made the whole world a wilderness. But I told you in the same Isaiah, when the spirit is poured out on I, the wilderness becomes a fruitful field because God is a life giver. Are you following me? The problem is that even too many Christians have become too dependent on the environment. The type and quality of life that we live is too dependent on what is happening around us. Are you following me? I went to us, I took us to the book of Joel, and I began, God began to describe a famine, a very strange famine. He said, that which the crawling locusts ate and left, the chewing locusts came. And that which the chewing locusts left, he began to mention so many types of locusts. The swarming locusts has eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts. You can imagine. Now, and I showed us that that plague of locusts in Egypt. And the description of it is that when the locusts passed through Egypt, there was nothing green. Say nothing green. And I ask you, in the world today, the more we are developing, the more men are coming into depression. You know why? Because 
we have very little contact with nature as it is. And I tell you, there are very few people living the very natural life that is designed by God. Are you following me? There can be very great sophistications, but we are not in contact with what God designed from the beginning. Are we following? And I want us to have a type of life in us that is not dependent on that which is happening around. Jesus said, in this world you will face tribulation, but rejoice, I have overcome the world. Something tells me, it does not matter what is happening around you, Jesus has overcome the world, it should not determine what is happening within you. Are you following me? It should not stop you from being alive and flourishing. That's what I'm trying to say. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I pray that we have that understanding. I, th I thought you would say better, amen. amen. That God will help you to have life within you. So I told us, the, the plants, they are called autotrophs. I told us they are not easily destroyed. Forget it. All this dry season. Let one or two major rains happen. Where you think there is no grass, what happens? Because they must survive. Because they are primary to existence. And there is something about the church. We are life givers. Are you following me? For example, look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. We are life givers. And too many Christians live as though they are dependent on, on just this natural life. So when it's going well, we are excited. When it goes wrong, our spirit dries up. In fact, most of times, our spiritual life is regulated by our finance. Immediately, things are flourishing around. Ah, I love you, Lord. I, ah, you know how much I mean. I just, you know, I'm so excited to follow you. But when the environment, when the chewing locust, and you know that even in that prophecy of Joel, the Bible showed us the people that went through so much reactions for the famine. He said the drunkards wail because the wine is cut off. He said the priests, he said because there is no drink offering. He said the animals groan. He said the plants grow. But in chapter 2, when God was calling for solution, do you know the only people he called for? Let the priests stand between the altar and the pot. He didn't call for the animals. Because they were the ones that can generate the life of restoration. You don't get it. So, you know, though they groaned because there was no drink offering in their house, but they were the intermediary that would bring forth life again back to the field. So when the priest stood in their place, they rejoice, oh pastor, because you are springing up. So the pastor was just receiving from the intercession of the priest. You see, but most of us have dropped our assignment and we are relating like we are only dependent upon nature. And I'm making, do you get the, the, the gist? Look at that First John chapter 5, 14 to 16. First John 5, 14 to 16. Now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything, somebody say, I have confidence in him. That if I ask anything, according to his will, he hears us. Verse 15. And we know that whatever we... When that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Verse 16. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give what? Him life. Hey, church, don't let's always take defeats as normal life. As though it has to happen. God said, when we see certain things, we can ask him. Now, in this color, whatever we ask, see what he first gave us as a description of what we can ask. He didn't talk about a phone. You know, we just read, whatever we ask him, we receive. Then he showed us the type of thing we can be asking. When you see your brother sin a sin that is not done to death, you will ask and it will give him life for those who commit sin not on death. This is, there is a sin leading to death. I do not say that you should pray about that, but you can pray. And God will give life to people. Are you following me? Are, are we following? 
Look at, look at James chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. I'm just, I'm just trying to do a recap, even though I didn't use all these scriptures last night, but I'm giving you in simple terms. Brethren, if, one, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, what did you say you should do? Start gossiping. Hmm? Can you see that brother has left the way? If anyone wanders from the truth, they have jumped from verse 19. And someone turns him back. Someone said, we have what it takes to turn things back. Someone turns him Let him know that he who turns a sinner from error of his way will save his soul from death. Are you seeing the capacity that God gave us? We can save souls from death. Did you, someone said, we can save souls from death. We can stop the enemy from gaining that advantage. We are not ignorant. He should not have advantage. Are you following me? He should not what? He should not have advantage. We should not say that it is the way of life. No, it's not the way of life. We are the ones that even though we see that what the enemy is doing, we have a way of bringing back the greens, the signs of life. We have a way of bringing back hope. And that was what I was prophesying and speaking to us last night in the book of Ezekiel 37. And I told us, when those people, when you speak about the dry bones, God eventually told Ezekiel, do you know these dry bones? He said, these are the men of Israel. For they say there is no hope. It wasn't like they were in the grave. It was what they were saying that made them dry bones. So God countered it by what he said Ezekiel should say. So he said, it's what they say. Now I command you to say. Are you following me? Is, how many of you know that life and death is in the power of the tongue? You can dry up your life by what you are saying. It's not hard to always talk about that. Ah, things are not working. It's very easy. You just say you are being factual, but you are drying. Things are, I mean, for this life has no meaning. It has meaning. You have just not discovered it. But don't say it doesn't have meaning. <laughs> are, are, you, are you with me? So God told Ezekiel, prophesy, tell them there is life, there is hope. And I want to tell you as a Christian, it is an aberration to be hopeless. The Bible told us about a father of faith. The Bible said, even against hope, he hoped. He still hoped. Because he knew that you can't eat a dead hand in God. Oh my God, did you hear what I'm saying? I said you can't eat a dead hand in God. There must always be a way. The Bible says it's the one that makes a way where there seems to be no way. There must always be a way. You can't eat a dead hand in God. You can't say I've come to the climax of it and there's nothing else is declaring. There is still something God wants to take you ahead. Hallelujah. And you must be, we must have the capacity to grow into it. Let's talk tonight briefly. Tonight is simple. What I call growing tips. Growing tips. John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8. John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it takes away. And every branch that bear fruit, it prunes. That it may bear more fruit. Yes? And you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. I'm running. Abide in me and I in you. And the branch, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Because he's the life giver. Are you following me? I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him. Be as much fruit for without me you can do nothing. Who is there? If anyone does not abide in me, is cast out as a branch and is withered. You will not wither. Yeah. You will not be dry. Yeah. And they gather them and throw them into fire. The withered, the destiny of the withered branch is fire. And it shall be. And if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. In verse 8, by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be 
my disciples. Hmm. Should I pick one more, one or two more scriptures? Second Samuel 23 verse 4. David was describing his experience with God. And the covenant of God. He said it shall be like a light of the morning when the sun rises. A morning without cloud. Like a tender grass. Springing out of the earth by clear shining after the rain. Growth is one of the signs of life. If you are living, you will grow. You see, but every big tree that you see started from something very insignificant. The first sprouting of a plant, that big tree could have been destroyed in, in five seconds because if somebody just trampled upon it, because plants start in what the Bible calls tender shoots. They are tender. They are easy, but they are so full of life. They have capacity to multiply their cells very fast because they are tender. And that is what is called primary growth. You see, one tonight I want to talk to us about having tender parts. Because you must be able to balance. Listen, this is what happens. When a tree grows, that tender plant side is going to become a very hard part after some time to give it stability. But if every part of the tree becomes that hard, the tree stops growing. And we have to be able to find the balance between establishment and tenderness. We must be able to find the balance between I now know certain things and I'm still open to what God is showing. Are you following me? Because it's easy to always conclude. Say, so what is it? I mean, the ways of God, this is how God works now, and I, and I know it. I've done it for 20 years. Except God helps you. There must be a part of you that is still very tender. Very dependent. It's the green side. It's the growing side. Are you following me? It's the place where God can correct things. It's a place where men are clapping for you and God is saying, no, you didn't get that right. Because it's still very exposed to God's touch. Some of other places are almost solidified. They cannot res respond to touch. They don't even know. They, um, and they have their strength. That's what is called secondary growth. It gives you width. It gives you space. But the real growth does not happen there. The real growth happens in those tender. And the tender parts are in two places. They are in the branches and in the roots. One is visible. The other is beneath. Every plant, no matter how established a plant is, in its root, it still has a tender plant. Something is still springing, looking for new sources. And you, you are just in Christ after five years. God is not saying anything again. It's not, it's in our church. And no church now. We start with praise worship. We give testimony. And that is the end. Go remove the biggest tree in your compound. You will still see some roots that are so fresh. The tree will not say, I have. One thing about the tree is that it never really stops growing. If you give it space, it will keep moving. My prayer for you today is that truly by the mercy of God, there will always remain a desire in us to keep pressing into God. Hosea chapter 14 verse 4 to 9. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For my anger has turned away from him. I, I will be like the dew to Israel. And he shall grow. Somebody say I must grow. When you grow, certain, you will stop reacting to certain things the way you have always reacted to them. When I was a child, I thought like a child. When I became a man, growth is the description of life. 
God said, when I am like a deal to them, that's my, that's my imputing to them, their response to my deal is what? Their growth. They will grow like the lily. The lily is actually a tender plant. But they will lengthen their roots like Lebanon. The Lebanon is cedar. That's a strong plant. So they will have the balance of tenderness and strength. Are you following me? God said, when the dew comes upon you, these two dimensions will come into your life. You will have the tenderness of growth and you will have the the stability of strength. They will grow. His branches shall spread. His beauty shall be like an olive tree. His fragrance like Lebanon. Yes. Those who dwell under his shadow shall return. They will be revived like the grain and grow like a vine. Their scent will be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim will say, what have I more to do anymore with idols? I've observed him. I'm like a green cypress tree. Your fruit is found in me. Verse 9. Who is wise? Let him understand this thing. Who is prudent? Let them know. For the ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them. But the transgressors stumble in them. I told you tonight is very direct. Simple thing. You remember when Job was looking and observing the plan. In Job chapter 14 verse 7 to 9. He said, even if a tree dies, there is hope for a tree. For if it is cut down, it will sprout again. And what is the technology of that sprouting? Is tender shoots will not cease. You will say, what is this tender? I've killed you. All your big branches are going. The tree will tell you I'm alive. See, that small thing you don't value is speaking that I'm still here. And after some time, you are going to look at that tender shoot. It's going to become very rigid. You will be praying to remove it. But when it starts out, when you, you now you go and call a gardener. He said, gardener, come and cut these trees in my house. But the day what you want to use money to cut started, you saw it. But you know the problem? This thing. Then you got so busy. Then one day, he told you, if you will remove me, you will try. And you will be so angry. But the journey of that very powerful step is tenderness. His root may grow old in the earth. His stump may die in the ground. If his root is old and his stump is dead, it's because they are still growing tips. So you can even remove a major part and say this one is dead and the plant is still there. I'm praying for you that there will be Things that people might even consider insignificant, but that God is still doing. It might be as simple as God is just training me. The new journey I'm learning now is time management. And somebody say, What is that one? Oh, when he begins to mature, why God is pointing his hand on that thing, you are going to be shocked. The essence of that training in God. Uh, are you following me? May God be able to plant a new thought in your heart. Some of us have not received any new thing years. No tender shoot. Anytime you understand, when I was in part one, Oga, you left school 15 years ago. And I thank God for the stability those experiences gave you. But what is he telling you? You point more to what every other person agrees with. But the tender shoot is only perceived between the soil and the green tree. I'm just, I, I cannot fully explain it to anybody now. But there is a dealing of God. He's dealing with me on this pride. He's dealing with me with this attitude. I'm not talking to anybody about it. Nobody necessarily knows that it is serious. But for me, it is serious. It has cost me some vigils. You don't know. And I'm just, all I'm saying is God, just help me. And God said, I like it. I like to see. You see, because except you become like children. You know something? Do you know something about children? That's where you can shape. Train a child. In the ways, when he's old, you don't train, you don't train that daughter. When some people are shouting before me, when some people are, and I know I'm dealing with a 40-year-old man, and I don't talk because they can't change. We are only going to manage that situation. 
But when you see a child, you can tell that child, when you see this type of thing, this is what you do. And that's the only reason why to, tomorrow can be better than today. Then that shoot. But this, uh, this uh, forest, <laughs> well, we just say, Father, whatsoever we can do with this generation, do something. <laughs> Except you be converted and become like a child and be able to receive who God sends like a child. There's something about the way children receive things. They are so hopeful. Some of us are so full. We have been molested. Our hearts are closed. We are not tender anymore. We are rigid. I'm still going to church now just because I just love God. But nobody, nobody can tell me to do anything I don't want to do. Don't worry. I mean, if you know what I'm saying. Me, I have made up my mind. Me, I have made up my mind. The Spirit of God cannot. What I have not learned, I have not learned. There's no, all those tongues, it's not my journey. When they are doing it in church, I'm just looking at everybody. Akpa de long. Baba de be a mama solve. Some of us is too early to just coagulate. It's too early for you to just. That was it. No, I know. I now know my mission. My mission. I'm just to give. Me, I'm not a goer. I don't go. I give. But it's set to it. You are 35. You, are, you have concluded that God cannot use it again. My own mission is just to be given. Anybody that have financed the kingdom, people that say they don't finance nothing. <laughs> because they are not even tender. They are not sensitive. They are just looking for a, an easy way out of responsibility. And me, I just say, do you know what it means to give to God's kingdom? You will give where you don't have. Yeah, yeah, you, give. We all of you, that. you are just doing money doubly. He's a giver. It's a ministry. Those that give, let them give with cheerfulness. Things are going from them like they are, they are thanking God. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Not rigid. And the Bible expects us as Christians, even in our old age, to have a, a tender shoot. How did I know? Because in Psalm 92, verse 12 to 15, it said that those that are planted in the house of the Lord, they will still be bearing fruit in their old age. The only way you can be bearing fruit is because there is a, that place that is producing, rigidity has not entered. Jesus said, my father is the vine dresser. I am the vine. Every branch in me that bears fruit, what does it do? He prunes it. Why does he prune it? So that it does not quickly become a very powerful stem. When it becomes like that, it becomes strong, but it becomes less fruitful. Ah, uh, you hearing me? Because it's the tender part that, that can easily multiply. Are you following me? That can easily. What's that word? I'm, teach, I'm using a Greek to teach you today. In faith, there is nothing we don't use to teach. Sometimes we do physics, we do medicine. Today we are in a Greek. In fact, this convention is a Greek. If you don't know primary consumer, I can't help you. I mean, you some people came from school, they should know. <laughs> they will be, they will still bear fruit in old days. They will be fresh. They will be old. And they will be fresh. They will be old. But they will be fresh. They will be experienced. And yet they will be vulnerable. Are you following me? They will, they, Peter one day said, Lord, you know I've never eaten anything unclean. So he had an experience, very vast experience about clean and unclean. He said, from my youth. Then God told him, whatsoever I've caught clean, you cannot call unclean. I can still introduce a new description to you that is contrary to what you have known. And he knew he was not dealing with the devil. Because he was saying, Lord. In that vision, he knew it was God that was dealing with him. And God was shaking him. From what he was already used to. Ah, uh, except you are green and tender. You get it? They say, God, don't move me again. What we did in 2015, with our every other thing just be giving thanks. Uh, 
How many of us think we are that flexible? Pastor, you have raised the church for 20 years. You are about to enter retirement. You know? This is at least, it's okay. Then a new lady. New lady. New lady. After, when your family is well, at least we have suffered. Now we are about to begin to, that time you will not need to call anybody to do opening prayer. There is, everything is working. Your own is to come and bless. Then the Lord said, <laughs> it was Bishop Wendeku said, say, finish the service. And Bishop, God told him, when you were the pastor of this church, he, said, he told him, he said, when I was the pastor, that means I'm not the pastor. He said, and God told him, yes, call my son, he's the new pastor. He said, thank you, Lord. Eh? Some of you will enter seven days first. Lord, remember my offering and my sacrifices. Ah. A church, um, he was not talking about a church of five people. It was a church of 5,000 members. <laughs> Even people can't live 300 people. The only way, except the people who are desperate, who the dryness of the land has entered, they sold their church and traveled abroad. I've seen that type of rigid, strange, strange thing. I mean, that's a waste, but it's a drum set to you. <laughs> Pastor, have you not heard it before? Huh? They think I'm laughing. I'm lying. There are people that said they are just, just come next Sunday. They say, ah, what is our church? <laughs> what is the back of that? It's a club. But, <laughs> say, where is the man of God? Say, ah, what is the start me? I better. <laughs> but when you have, no matter how dry the environment, when you have 10,000 members, ah, except God, except you have become a prey to the enemy. I mean, you won't, it can go still say, when you are the pastor of this 10,000 sitter. See, that's why I used to tell people, there is no richest man of God. Do you know why? Because there is no ownership in the kingdom. There is only stewardship. What you are driving now, you might not go home with it tonight, if you are flexible. Oh, fake bang. Eh? Which God? Which God can? Have you heard of people that drove a car to a meeting and as they got there, they just knew that it's not their car. And they received it with thanksgiving. So I drove the car here and I knew that this is not my car. Eh? <laughs> How many of you want to enter into that tenderness? They say, no. Let me tell you what you do with God now. It is when you are struggling that you use what you don't like as a seed for what you are looking for. And when you get what you are looking for, there is no God. He has to be careful before he talks. See all this today. Those days, they said somebody said God called him from campus. To leave the campus. No, you don't, you, after 10 years, you can't even leave your campus. You know what? That's where you are flourishing. You see me going there to your father. God has used you in your campus. There is not saying, Lafia. You know that going to Lafia, nobody will know you there. So ability to transit, you will see me come and say, we'll be doing monthly meeting. You, because that's where you can easily gather it. <laughs> you don't get what I'm saying. So I tell you, I say, I think, but, so, um, there's this vision God is putting in my, I'm not saying everything is wrong. But I'm saying that you're afraid. <laughs> you're afraid. You would rather consolidate and become big stem. And many times we have become so strong that God can have his way. Not because anything is wrong with being strong. But you must be like a lily and like a cedar. At the same time. Young people, I need to tell you, there's so much to learn. Don't crystallize too fast. Yeah, oh, what is the Holy Ghost? You know, when you start a meeting, you just pray in the Holy Ghost. You pray in the Holy Ghost. Don't worry. You see, it is me. 
there is no type of movement I have not seen. I have seen movements where people cannot speak English again. When they will be filled, they will be going home, they will be falling down to their room. I've seen it. They will walk for miles and be laughing. Ha <laughs> ha! I've seen it. I've seen the ones that said, God has moved out of this order. It's not in this order anymore. God, I've seen people that said, God is not even doing church. <laughs> we've heard it before. One of our friends many years ago said, Jesus took, not one of our friends, one of Jubez's friends. They said, they asked him, why is the church so divided? He said, Jesus took the bread. And what did he do? He broke it. He said, even Jesus himself broke it. Ah, everybody said, ah. When he finished preaching, he was singing like that. The all is your remus, 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 there is nothing new about it. You see? There are certain people when I see, like this afternoon I went to, and I just suddenly saw a nine minute video that Pastor Dwayne spoke to a young minister. It was not hard for me to listen. I saw the way it was warning us. I said, you see, I know you have anointing, you are there excellently. He said, but see, these fathers, they are going. He said, let me tell you, they have experience, you don't have it. And your belly lost set to a jaw come in your Tony, a woman, would he? Born again. Maybe all of you are praying and fire. Oh, yes, we're ranking territorial functionaries. They brought a man that has five wives to you, they are all born again, and you are the one to talk. The widows of the Christians are crying on the widows of the Hellenists. You don't know where to start. You, you, you want to say, I say, yes, you are the wrong. You are right. Then you divide the church. <laughs> you know the story of that man of God, Pastor Bakai, said the church was about a thousand. Then he went to preach. He went to preach. Anybody that is a second wife in the man's house is an imposter. After he finished preaching, two Sundays after, the congregation reduced to five, to 500. <laughs> He lost half of the people. When he started, he said, yes, this is it. This is it. There are people going to heaven. And do you know something about God? He's not hasty. He didn't talk. He said, a couple of months after, he said, one morning, God came to him. Me, I gathered the people. You scattered them. He said, no, no, no. I didn't scatter them. I was preaching your word. I was preaching your word. He said, God just asked him, what was your mother's uh, position, your father's? The mother was the number 10 wife. Of his father. He said, your mother is number 10. I use you. He repented in those ashes. But see, when you are young, no, 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 no. I know the word. I know the word. Just pray the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I don't want to refer to this. Some of my sons came to this church many years ago. They were looking. They were so dissatisfied. Things should be better than this. You know, we just prophesy. We touch every seat. Every seat will be full. We touch, we just go. I said, no problem. So I called all the others. I, I like your faith. I give you one month assignment. You must all bring one, one people. They went out. They tried their best. They did all they could do. They healed the sick. Some of them were healed and night did not return. You think healing is everything. There were 10 lepers healed. They didn't come back. You think because people don't come back, it means because there is no impact. Forget it. You don't know the heart of man. You think one of the things that distinguished Jesus was the Bible said Jesus knew what was in man. He knew what was in man. He, there was nothing man did that showed Jesus. When you are maturing, you know man and you love them. Because the first shock you will have when you know man is that you will run. But when you mature, you will know them and yet love them. Not because you don't know what they will do, but because you know what God wants you to do. Ah, are you following me? You are already stabilized in the spirit. God will give you understanding. I say in old age you will still be bearing fruit. Look at Ezekiel 17. Let me quickly rush. Ezekiel 17 from verse 1 to 10. Let us see the technology of growth. Ezekiel 17, from verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, post a parable. Speak a parable to the house of Israel. 
and say, Thus says the Lord, a great eagle with large wings and long pinions full of feathers of various colors came to Lebanon and took from the cedar the highest branch. What did he take? He didn't remove the cedar. The cedar is the tallest tree. What did he go for? He went for a branch. He cropped up his topmost young twig. He didn't go for the root. What did he go for? The youngest twig. That is the sprouting twig. And he carried it to a land of trade and he set it in a city of merchants. And he took some of the seed of the land and planted it in a fertile field. He placed it by the abundant waters and set it like a willow tree. And it grew. And it grew. What did he look for when he was trying to grow a new thing? He took the twig. Then he created the environment. And the twig began to grow. A vine of low stature. His branches turned towards him. His roots were undying. It was a twig. It was a branch. But suddenly it's not having roots. Uh, are you following me? Because he knew that the next phase of growth is in the tender edges of the plant. So it became a vine. It brought forth branches and it put forth shoots. Look at it again. But there was another great eagle with large wings and many feathers. Behold, his vine... This vine bent its root towards him, stretched its branches towards him from the garden terrace where it had been planted that he might water it. It was planted in good soil by many waters to bring forth branches to bear fruit and become a majestic vine. Continue. Say, thus says the Lord, will he thrive? Will he not pull up his roots, cut off his fruit, leave it to wither? All of his spring leaves will wither. No great power of many people will be needed to pluck it by his roots. Verse 10. Behold, it is planted. Will it thrive? Will it not utterly wither when the heat will touches it? It will wither in the garden terrace where it grew. Where? Because it removed its own roots. As newborn babies in Christ, there are two dimensions that must happen to us. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 and 7 said, we must be rooted and grounded in Christ. You must, there must be something in you still present. Some roots still growing out into Christ. And people immediately have begun pastor, they say, the growth ceases. Do you know why? The thing they have been looking for is recognition of men. And immediately it came. There was no other motivation to grow. So they do things publicly, but win, lose private battles. Because those growth are the things that should correct anything happening in their private life. Are, are you still with me? They win public battles, but they lose private. Because they are not rooted. And their branches are not fresh. They already know. I'm, uh, some of you here, yeah, I hope you are not part of this. Uh, when you go to church, that uh, doesn't want to preach. Ezekiel 17. No more scripture. Can be one of the highly signs of losing it. Staying too long. And let me tell you, there's no lie. I, can I tell you the truth? If you stay around these things so for a long time, you will know some things. There are some preachers, if they open the Bible like this, I can tell you where they are going. I've been here for some time. And I tell, you, I tell you, I lie not. Nine out of ten. I'm right. I can tell you somebody that wants to preach money from his first, from his first statement. And I, I will tell my wife, oh, this is the next thing we say. They used to say, how do you know? I said, scripture and say, scripture to my Because I've been there. Except God has kept a tender heart in you, you will quickly define everybody. In fact, you will say, I know how the spirit moves. This type of meeting now, you say, Holy Ghost cannot, there cannot be. How many of you know God is so powerful? You keep learning. We can be preaching about giving and somebody with his eyes will open. It's not every move of the spirit that they will clear share. And there's a move of the spirit you will not be able to sit. And you must be open. 
Are you following me? Are you following me? But you know, we can become so attached to a pattern. Yeah. That meeting, Pastor was just teaching. Like one of my guys would say, Want to show the role? What's in? What's in bearing? Want to show the role? Some of you just got some things have happened before you are aware. The day Jesus caused the fig tree, nobody looked at it. Nobody took it significant. Did you notice? Yeah, yeah. What did they happen? I said, hey, ah, Jesus is hungry. Uh-uh. Now, because you're hungry, now they cause tree. They didn't talk. They, you know, there's a way they did not fight him because he's master. But that doesn't mean they always agreed. Occasionally, they say, ah! Baba, Baba, no seafood. They're angry. One day, he told them, he said, beware of the living of the Pharisees. He said, mm-hmm. Didn't carry bread. Baba don't they hungry. Now bread we ain't no carry. They make him see revelation now. Then Jesus looked at them. The Bible says, and Jesus perceived their thoughts. Because he knows them. He said, okay, when you when you fed five thousand, how many baskets did you take? He said, when you fed four thousand, how many they said self? That's all he said. Then they came to their, themselves. He cannot be talking about bread. Because he didn't say, How many did you even feed? He said, How many baskets did you take? <laughs> Which means if the body is not the issue, what is left over is what I will even deal with. Then they understood. I was talking about the teaching of the Pharisees. There were times they did. So when he caused the victory, then to the next day, as they were passing, it was not, Jesus was so full of life that he did not check the second time whether that word came to pass. They needed to call Jesus' attention. When some of you prophesy, you'll be checking the prophecy every six months. You come to Allah, my dear, come disgrace. It's all. Share the testimony. Share the testimony. You'll be forcing, forcing testimony. That's why people will give the ones they say, "I want to give this testimony by faith." Don't give testimony. I don't force testimony time every Sunday so that people will not start lying. Say testimony time later. You people in this show, you are not serious. You are not testifying. My validation is not your testimony. I know whom I believe. And I know that he will keep whatsoever I have committed to his hand. That's why I'm getting it. I'm not against testimony. In fact, let me tell you the truth. They overcame by the word of their testimony. It's not testimony time. Say amen. amen. I know that's what they said. They said, say, let's seal it. If you don't testify, it's not sealed. That's not what the Bible said. The word of their testimony, that word testimony is the new covenant. They overcame it by the blood of the new covenant. It's not by the blood of testifying. Now, it's a good culture to testify about what God is doing. Means, but it is not like, hey, so God will not take it. Hey, God will not. When you were yet sinner, I gave you Jesus. You think it's your testimony that will... Most of us here don't testify. You have seen miracles today. Do you testify? The way you'll be looking as if God is... You, even your face can dry everything. When you sh- people should see you and life you spring out. Some of you, what you have gone through, others are going through it and you cannot speak life to them. You can't, you can't tell them. You know, there was a time I was that hopeless. But you, see, you might not be able to reconcile how I used to feel with who I am. And somebody said, so you went through that. I was talking to a pastor yesterday and I was giving him so many experiences. He was shocked. He said, ah, pastor. Eh? As you say, I will remember another story. <laughs> I said, <"Gentu> <laughs> he went with humility. Because the way some of you see me now, you think I've never gone through. His family is rich. They, uh, they supported him. Everything was working. Partners I've never had. I've never had official partner in my ministry. And these are the people that give us 5,000 5, every month. I've never. It's very fearful. I don't talk about my needs to nobody. Try it if you think it's easy. If God is not helping you to be moist, you'll be very dry. Eh? Ask rent. This is, and you don't talk to anyone. Else. My wife, now, my wife is now full of faith. If I tell my wife I don't have money, she says, Now, that, she has, I say, go to the role. Pepe, 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 pepe. Because there will be times we'll be discussing something that we don't know where it's coming from. And as we are discussing, 
Somebody that is in Abuja, we answer that need times 10. And you know something? I don't hide. I just, uh, uh, 150 kone. That's how I tell her. I tell her, she will say, if you marry me, you will run mad. I'm telling you, if you are not fresh in the spirit, <laughs> something I can need something tomorrow, and I still don't have it, and I will need sleeping. In fact, the thing is, I won't pray. <laughs> okay, perfect and moist. But some of you, it will regulate your entire ministry. When you get to church, everybody will be angry. I want to give you church. No problem. We won't be. Take care of me. You are just angry. <laughs> and then one day they will not do that. our sin. <laughs> Some years ago, my wife, when we were to have Jemima, the doctor told us she was not positioned well, so we have to have her by CS. The CS was Monday. Sunday service, I preached and I didn't have the money. And it's in an hospital, it's not the hospital where they collect 50,000 for CSU. And I was not NHIS. I said, I must pay cash the next month. And I finished this, and I entered the office and I sat down. And people were coming to greet me and said, Bro, this is well with you. This is well with you. So somebody entered my office and said, ah, it's, ah, it's mama. I said, she's doing fine. He said, and so, I said, because the person is close, and I said, oh, we should have the baby tomorrow, but I think it's going to be I said, I said what's about the money? I said, there's no money, but there will be money. She was shocked. She looked at me. She said, there will be money. She said, okay, I don't have money, but I will transfer something. I said, that's okay. She did transfer the next one. I didn't call her. Because there will be money. <laughs> but she said something that touched me. She said, but mama's heart will be agitated. I, I remember. I said, eh. I couldn't reconcile whether she was or not. Because she just did that. Somehow, somehow. Because when you trust in God, your leaf will be green. How many of you remember last night? I don't know about you. I will be an ingrate now to, to take anxiety as a virtue. I cannot take. When I want to change car, it starts with discussion. I just tell my wife, it's as if we need a new car. That's all. At that time, we are discussing, we might have 20,000. No, I'm telling you, it's as ridiculous as am I lying. Sometimes last year, I just drove out. I told my wife, I'm coming with a car. We went to make a car. I drove the car there. I said, This is your car. I said, ah. uh, Are you sure? I said, No. Well, hey, why? Why? What do you think? <laughs> she was, I, that's why all around us, everybody that knows us believe we are very rich. In our workplace, we are very rich. And I'm sure sometimes, I don't even mean sometimes, I don't know whether I'm rich or I'm not. Because the way. I believe it's as if I'm too rich. <laughs> One day last year, she went to, to work and the car stopped. Infused. I'm talking to you about trust. Trust, not because you have money, but it, it has a way because your anxiety will not add one cubit to your height. Yes, do you know the only thing we do? It will dry up the remaining life. You just be anxious and even to pray, you will not be able to pray. Then she started the car, the car did not start. And I walk as I helped her. I just I told her, I called her, I said, What's up? Okay, okay. I said, Look around, where do they say battery? Said, That's not what you buy around. That's not pure water. I, said, hey. I know the people that were with her, I said, Just look around like that. I said, Look around, look around. Come back into the echo, so we can't be back. They started looking at her like mystery. And I was like, let me tell you the truth. That day, that was the last money on me. And I spent it cheerfully. Because the Lord is my shepherd. He maketh me lie down. But the way I spent it, you would think that what remained 
was that I had not less than times 20. But that was the last time I oh bad me more than I was so bad. That means God has made the provision. Uh, so I said, buy the vat. I'm in 25 thousand. Yeah. Some of you, even when you have the money, you say, ah, Timo, don't do the share Lord How many of you know what I'm talking about? That's how some people mount up debt. They always had the money. But the precaution. So what they should have used to pay the debt, they hold it. Before you know what happened, the debt becomes times two. Because now they would have spent the money, they are still owing, then they will be looking. For, and before you know what happened, the enemy has made a complete mess of you. And the foundation of that crisis is lack of trust. I'm telling you the truth. You just say, hey, that go see be telling it until they lie, lie, toto be. Eh? In this sense, you say, I've checked everyone now. There's nowhere any five naira is coming. You, God's child, nowhere. God does not need to leave your street. You hear what I, I said, God does not need to leave your street to meet your need. Said, How much more to search the whole world? I don't find one place. Ah, uh-uh. you bad reach that level. Your life is so fruitless, reach that level. Nobody can remember that God has helped them through your life. You are not, you are looking at, so let me go back to preaching. Because this one is a pastor, who walk for you, walk. Say, keep saying, you walk for me. Life and death power of the tongue. Some people like to hog crisis. Some of them are the background. Nobody can tell me that one idol. Abraham was an idolater. It's not your grandfather that served the idols alone. He said, your father Abraham on the other side of Mesopotamia worshipped idols. Hey, the father of faith, his background was idol worship. The idols didn't cross the river with him. They are still crossing with you for 25 years. You change church, they change church with you. They are chasing you. Around. They are not the one chasing you, it's your mind. I'm telling you the truth. And when you go to some places, eh, like one of my friends yesterday said he wants to be catching witches all around. I called Pastor Jibbe and said, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Said, God has shown him the power to catch witch. I said, by the time, Pastor Jibbe told me, by the time it's true, everybody around you will be one. Because that's what happens. Because there's no end to that thing. God does not need to tell you all the crisis he's delivering you from. How can I do? I've told people, you cannot do ministry for 20 years without killing people. Somebody will die. No. The son of mine is for the rising and the fall. You don't need to kill. But because you are precious to me, I will give other men's life. For your life. What do I tell him? It's not that bad. If you don't chase them, if they chase you and they don't repent, nobody will die. Because we give life. But let the proportion be that 20,000 people have get, gotten life before somebody dies. Some of you, you kill every people every day, but nobody gets born again. Every day you are killing people everywhere. Every spirit that is killing, you are killing, oh Lord, my mother's house, my father's house. But you have never gotten one person born again from your mother's house. Not one person from your father's house, but you have killed. Both the innocent and the guilty there. You are not green. You are not green. There is no, you, you are not giving life. You are not producing fruit. Am I making sense? Because when you enter those battles, you will never come out of them. If you ever, if you, all your life, your conscious, one of my daughters was telling me something here on Sunday that I like. She said, when, she said when she was young, she used, they used to tell her that, she used to have this suppression, this small, small demon suppression. May God help you to be calling demons small. Some of you are already angry because I said small, small demons. Hey man, this should be pastor. Man, demon man, small, small demon. You know those that are demons that they, you want to sleep there. When you are sleeping, you, you want to cry out. Hey, chi, chi. See, the ones that, that come, they are not principality. Those are small. Oh, Nisha, I don't wait, but I don't want to look. I don't want to look. I don't want to look. 
So when I watch all those films, they say they send somebody from River Niger to they do. They send somebody from inside river to come and bring you down. It's your loss that will bring you down. Most of you, do you didn't need to contrast somebody from River Niger. When you are watching all manner of film that will kill you, you now send somebody from before they send somebody from River Niger, it must be very high degree. Every time he eh? and yes, you are not afraid. He says somebody from River Niger, you River Niger. Well, every man is tempted according to his own loss. Oh, till the moju. Okay. So, there's this. <laughs> what was that story I was saying? So, this is my daughter, they were pressing her, pressing her. <laughs> so, you know, and when they go to church, when they are doing meeting, immediately they say, The power of God is here. She will scatter. Then they will press her. She will scatter, they will press her. It got so bad, she told me the one that was most hilarious that, in fact, in one delivery session, she started talking about. Yes, many of us are here. Because she was confused. There's a way people will confuse your mind. You yourself will say, a shuba no me. She started talking back. Like, yeah. Then she's the most powerful thing. Is that she said, when I started attending Feka, I said, one day I was just reading my Bible. Say, I want scripture just came out. Immediately I saw that scripture. I just knew that this thing is wrong. And that was the end. Hmm? I know some of you don't like this. Like that, I went for one meeting many years ago. One lady said, they said, until seven prophets pray for her, that her situation cannot change. So the man of God started looking for us. One, two, three, four, five. He said, surrender. I said, me, I was there. I just said, I don't know. I'm not even sure whether I'm a prophet. So I was the youngest there. So the man said, okay, okay, please join us. I was not looking at the battle. I was looking at the lady girl. I want to bad rap from the girl in next meet. I knew. Because most of us are so dry, we don't even read the Bible. But we are always looking for something. Something that will just happen. Change everything. Move us. Knock our head against the wall. Money. Div- Let me tell you one of the most powerful things you can have in your life. is consistent devotion. Just have a constant devotional life. I'm telling you. It's powerful. Just have little discipline. I will never pick my phone without talking to God. Try it. Because some of us, if we wake up 3 a.m., including me, my hand finds my phone no matter where it is. I know where it is. I'll pick it. You don't share it. Since Ukraine have been fighting Russia, that has changed your life. Those things never change nobody. If you are following me, say I'm following. I'm following. If you are angry, where? Come back for tomorrow morning session. It might be better. But for tonight, it's about growth. It's about growth. Because there are some deliverances that come by the force of growth. But growth happens when you are tender. That's when growth happens. When God can come and redefine things for you. That's when growth happens. As newborn babies, First Peter 2.2, 2, desire the sincere milk of the world that you might grow thereby. Let's see. Joining between being babies and growing. Being children. Who is going to tell God, show me your ways, teach me? Because if, you do, if he does not teach you, men will give you. <laughs> Somebody came here and told me, one of our daughters, I was looking, I'm looking at that. She said, when she wanted to go and serve, her father took her to a man of God. She doesn't know how much of thousands that man of God took to create a prayer for her. And the man of God that gave her something tied up inside the, the man, not the man of God. The man gave her something tied in a, like a paper, you know. They tied it up with a, 
rope or thread. So she dropped it. And the man of God told her, the man told her, that even now where you are, if they strike you with cutlass, you can't enter. I said, this is that time of... So she kept it in her bag to travel around Nigeria because then she came to faith rest. After many years, she was, what is even that? She went to remove the tea. It was paper. That's all. When you refuse to be moist, You'll be dry, ready for fire. Because what is whatsoever is wither goes to fire. That's all. Abisha will lean Whatsoever this wither goes to fire. She had knowledge, she had the word of God. She, she even went to where is that thing? I hope you are not still holding the broom your mother gave you. If Steve come to your house, they will be sweeping. That's why they visit you every year. Have you noticed they never swept? If God does not deliver you, nothing will pass over. It's when they see the blood, not the broom. When I got born again, those days in my father's house, I knew where they hang those things. I was the one. When they go out, I remove it, I burn it. I said, I want to see whether the thief will now come. Some of you test nothing. You just say, hmm, hmm, I'm learning. Hmm. But the talisman is still in your cupboard. See there. Oh, may I dry? It has gone spiral. It's still in your house. Say, oh, may I dry? So you will now, they will be chasing you with green things in the dream. You know, I say, Lord, what type of green am I experiencing? <laughs> Glory to God. You are, because you don't deserve the sincere milk of the world. I've retreats where you study. Tell yourself, I want to finish this book of Jeremiah. Nothing will happen. Heaven will not fall. You will read it. You will understand some. Some you will not understand. Some is say, don't mind. Finish it. When you finish the entire chapter, one will stick. That one is enough. Are you hearing me? Don't be going around. There's one man who got fresh fire. What am I? When a man, he do that. This is the confidence we have in it. That when we go to somebody that can ask him, when we, someone say, God delights in hearing my voice. That will change your approach. When we ask of him for anything, he hears us. He said it in that first John, he said it again in John. He said, in this my father is glorified. That whatsoever you ask of him, he will give it to you. What you need is one step away from just by asking. Especially when you know that without him you can do nothing. So you are totally dependent on him. You know your flourishing is in abiding in him. If, I, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you will ask for anything. He said anything. You can't be stranded. I've come to talk to people that cannot be stranded. Because you will ask for anything. You will ask for anything. You will ask for anything. And my father will give it to you. When you are on God's mission, you deserve God's support. Are you following me? God sends nobody without giving them his support. Those that trust in the Lord, their leave will be green. It will be like they are planted by water. Forget how the world looks. There are people who are planted by waters. And they don't even, when you see a tree that is by water, it doesn't, uh, I don't need much. What does it do? 
he keeps growing his roots. He has enough, but is this saying in case? I need more strength. I need more establishment. Even if things are work easy for you. Even if God has answered you, don't stop pushing, pressing into him. So that he can bring new levels of body, new levels of assignment. May God be able to talk to you about something he has never said before. May he be able to require something from you that he has never required before. Pastor Adway, I remember, I remember I was already born again. The day God told Pastor Adway to give his Lincoln Navigator. Lincoln Navigator was the car those days. He said, I, he, said he pretended as if he did not hear. <laughs> but he gave it. He said, and I did not have a car for two years. So he was fighting him because he's flying jet. So I was using church bus. You know how church people will talk. Gio, you go. Boss, you charge the ladder. I feel Gio, look on hand, Dubai. Lincoln Navigator, the idol you have been pressing for. Oh, may God help us. May we be fresh and flourishing, sensitive to the Spirit of God. Ah, it's not easy, but it will be easy for us. What you have already built as your treasure. You now I was meditating this afternoon. I was trained. When Abraham got Isaac, God came to Abraham. Take your son. Go sacrifice him. Now listen to me. Do you know what the Bible told us Abraham did? Now, when you give it to him, Abraham did not necessarily give it to him. Let me tell you what Abraham did. The Bible says Abraham went knowing that he received him from the dead before. So in actual sense, Abraham was giving it, still holding back to it, think, knowing that he will receive. Because since I was dead, when I gave back to him, so even if he dies, I can see him. So listen, Abraham went home, went to that journey, we still with a sense of receiving him. That's what God was teaching me. You know, he said, God thinks he said, take it. It's not, so he knew that it would, it would not be a permanent sense of loss. He will give it to God. But he knew that as he received from the dead, so he can receive him back. That's why he told the servants, I am the lad. We will go yonder and worship and come back. It's not because he had another second plan. He knew he would die. But he already said, I believe God. And that belief made his faith robust. That even when the son was putting doubts in this earth. My father, this is wood. This is fire. This is fire. Why is the lamb? He said, the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. How many of you know, just knowing that the Lord will provide, many times not knowing where the Lord will provide can keep you green. The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. They said, where? I said, the Lord will provide. On the mountain of the Lord. I said, Pastor, what you don't know? He said, the Lord will provide. Just God has been able to plant something in his mind. If you get what I'm talking about. And that was enough to, <laughs> to texture his heart. So when the enemy wants to say, hey, you are losing your son. He said, he has been preaching to himself. He said, he has had God. Then he started preaching to himself. He said, in actual sense, when I received him, I was dead. That means, he didn't say that to God. He was saying that to himself. And he created a lot of humility in him that the sounds of doubt could not enter. Are you following me? His bones were flourishing within him. He did not consider the deadness of his body. Ah. Church. What I'm trusting God for is that something will still be fresh growing up in our inside. A new adventure. A new leading. What is the thing God is telling you to do now? 
what? Yes, I know it's what he told you five years ago, but the truth is that is he still reiterating that command? Even if he's not saying anything new, it must still remain fresh to you. It must still be able to drive you. It's not that, uh, what he said. Uh, what he said is in the past. No! You might have the branches, but you don't have the tender shoots. Glory to God. How do we, what are the keys to remaining green? Number one, to trust. Jeremiah 17, 5 to 8. Number two, Psalm 1, 1 to 6. That man will be like a tree planted by waters. There's something about trees planted by water. They are not sensitive to seasons. So what determines what they do is not environmental. Are you following me? Said today, nobody is serious about God. Immediately, most of us said nobody is serious about God. It seeps into our own seriousness with God. So everybody, everybody does not send God again. That's everybody. That's not you. Are you following me? Because it does not sit in the seat of discomfort. His own meditation is in the law of God day and night. Can I tell you one truth? I'm only as confused about a situation I've never had God about. Does not matter how reckless the situation is. Immediately, I have one word. Even when I want to go for meetings, doesn't matter the type of congregation. All I'm looking for is one word. If God can speak to me, whether they are billionaires or they are paupers, I'm going. But if I tell, if you invite me, in fact, let me tell you my own experience. Ninety percent of times, if you are inviting me for a meeting, as you invite me, I know what I will preach. If the meeting is six months' time, that's what I will preach. It won't change. As you are talking to me, I'm hearing it. If I wait for six months and I did not hear, I won't come for your meeting. I'm not, I don't need God to say, I didn't send you. I, I can even, he will say, I will open your mouth, I will put a word in your mouth. Then I will lose your tongue to speak. So I can't speak what he does not put there. If anything I don't sense it, then there's nothing working. But if I sense him putting something, let the whole world say, oh, there's nothing that there's all of them are teenagers, they are not even serious people. But he has put something. I will go with freshness, I will go with excitement, I will go with some expectation. Even if I go there and it's as if nothing works, I won't move. Because I knew I went there with what he has put inside of me. Am I making sense? That is a way to remain very green like a tree planted by waters you want to be green you can't be rebellious the rebellious will dwell in dry land there's something about rebellion it saves life from people you first feel like you are you are holding on to yourself but after some time you just discover you are solitary and it saps life from you. Saps life from you. It degenerates people. Am I making sense? Are you with me? Let's look at Psalm 80 from verse 8. Thank you, Jesus. Where are your own growing tips? Are they the shoots? Or the roots, but something must be growing. Are they sin or unseen? But something must be growing. And to the tree, that is the treasure. He's not looking at what he has already gotten. Do you know why? If you cut even those big stems, the tree know that with those tender roots, it will grow. But if you go for those roots, and leave the big stem, the tree knows it will die. So when you cut the tree, it knows that some pain is for a short moment. But what he's looking for is, am I still growing? If I'm growing, I can heal. One of the things growth gives to you is healing. You will look at things you have wept about and look back at them and say, oh, why was I weeping? When I was in school, I went through so much pain, so much slander, I mean, I told myself those days, I said, when I write my autobiography, 
what they did to me in this fellowship will take not less than five chapters. If I write in my autobiography today, it will be two lines. Do you know why? I didn't stop growing. When I grow, I now look at this and they call shower when you're by. Because I now discover that you allowed men to ride over our head. You took us through fire. You took us through water. But you brought us to a wealthy place. I discovered the pathway to a wealthy place is always through crisis. At a point, I began to look. When life is too normal, I get uncomfortable. Because I don't sense promotion. Uh, you didn't get what I'm saying. There was a time I used to cry, Lord, I don't want Wala. Now, nobody gave me a problem. Everybody loves me. I'm not settling anybody. Nobody seems not to understand me. Now, I'm not looking for crisis, but I've discovered it's part of life. I've healed. I've healed so much that some of those people, I can go back to them and be a blessing. Because I never ceased growing. Those tender parts, those, don't worry, I am with you. They began to grow. They became healing virtues. They became my comfort, but they didn't stop being my comfort. They became the comfort of many others. Those tender, those simple days of crying before God. And all God said is, you think I didn't see it? I saw it. It looks like he's just pacifying the moment. No, he's growing something that is going to become a major tool in your life to bless many other people. Are you following me? It's not just pushing you away from your pain. It's healing you. And when you go to Jesus, ah. so today I look at some people and say, oh, well, but the year one new. I've even forgotten the pain, the slander, the anger, the noise, the lies. Let me tell you, people can lie. If they've never lied against you, you have not journeyed enough. How would you buy? And they quarrel. One lady concocted a story in school that I slept with one girl and the whole fellowship believed it. And they wanted to suspend it. They set up this disciplinary committee to suspend it without ever... Uh, they didn't even call me to... to defend. As they wanted to call me, as to declare strike, the Lord defended me. They went on with their plan that they could do execute. Six months after, they wanted to do it again. Yeah, yes, yes. This is the time. As they were planning it, one of them ran mad. I'm telling you the truth. I didn't even know. If it was even me that was chasing the person around school, it just belongs to us. We too. did that rule? That's why I stopped defending myself. You don't get it. I've always told people, the day God rises to fight for you, you will beg God for who is fighting against you. You will tell him, oh, please, God, I don't know whether, whether that fits your theology or not, but God fights for people. So I'm always, when I see people creating slander, I just laugh. You are just putting yourself in a, dan- in a dangerous place. I never want to get to a point in my life where we never t- trust him to defend me. Why I will be too sufficient for myself. Where I will have thick bouts. I say, I know, I know how to answer everybody. Because there will be things you are coming to. You can't answer. You bear. And there it was a pure language congress. I was preaching like this on a Sunday morning. In Bashan. Then two guys entered. And they said, their sister is sick in UCH. This was maybe 2010 20, 2009 2009 and I looked at them I didn't know them from Ada they said they are calling for me they said the sister said you should go and call so when I came from the pulpit I said who is your sister they mentioned her I, said, I know her but I still didn't know them so I told them yeah, go in your car so I called you I called you and me and somebody and Dako Dako was there and we entered the car I said let's go then when I got to UCH, emergency, I saw the girl and I saw the mother. The mother said, okay, so, sorry, who is Pastor Taya? I said, I am. I'm the one. 
You thought they called me to come and pray for the sick. No. Then the woman said, hey, but you know, if you, are, if you are dating a girl, at least you should have come home for us to know you. If they believe they have used that for charm. I know some people are hearing this story they've never had before. That's why me and Pastor Jibel, we bond. You know, you don't know where we don't go. He said, you know, I said, if a girl says you are dating, Pastor Dwey said, please don't use any a woman as a kitchen. You are fighting it. He said, if a woman says you want to sleep with me, how do you defend yourself? I said, no. They said, ah, I don't borrow on me. <laughs> the girl said, ah. She, she has been shouting my name since 3 a.m. Tayo, go and call Tayo for me. I thought it was Nollywood film. Then, I didn't know what to say. I just went to her and said, Me, I'm dating you. I've never been to her house. I don't know. The only place I've seen her was on her campus. <laughs> I said, Me, I'm dating you. I wanted her to say yes because there was no way to defend myself. And the only thing I could say is, If I be a servant of God, that was my plan. In seven days, and I will walk away because Oti Bakugo ministry me get up. Pastor Jibel, you are there. The brother said, I will use police to arrest you. What do you mean? What do you use my sister for? Say, go go here, mama, walk by the car, So, some of you have not heard this story before. As I looked at her, I said, me, I'm dating you. Just say yes. Because I was embarrassed. She just started crying. Fear entered her. Hey, no, it's because I want to see you. <laughs> if you think that's the end of the story. If you had the story, you didn't know me. You would believe I used that. That girl came to my door 5 a.m. Pastor Jubel, you were in the house. I quickly called an elder. About the about the turn. The elder told me, "Don't go out." To me. Say, "I'm coming from my house." A pastor. And the pastor. The man came to my house early. I said, "What are you doing here?" Six a.m. We are already in their church. Certainly, they say, "Who is that pastor?" They want to see. There is a man that still sits with you to the end time. He looked at me. That's where he knew me. I was pastor Pentecostal way. It was a crisis. It was a bad one. That time, if I entered the cab, the, the people I don't see, as I entered the cab, I would see her mother. I met her mother in the cab twice. Within two weeks, I said, What are you chasing me around? <laughs> then after that, the woman said, I understand what is happening. It's my daughter that has lost her mind, but we need you. How do you go minister to somebody that slandered you? The only time she takes drug is if I tell her to take drug. Say, that drug, take it. It is well with you. She said, you say I should take it. I said, take it. <laughs> they are all laughing. Now we had the, I had the bell go. <laughs> Thank God I have not hugged. That's why I want all of you that hug you anyhow. Can hug anyhow. If they accuse you, you cannot escape because you are hugging. And it seems that he hugged. No, if I had hugged that girl, you remember, she brought an iPhone for me those days when iPhone first came out. I said, This is an iPhone. I said, What do I want? I said, Take your phone. I was using one very bold one, you know, bold one. That bold one, the entire battery span, Pastor Jubei will remember, was 30 minutes. I keep charging it, it goes on charging. And they gave me an iPhone. I said, Can't take your phone. What concerns me with iPhone? Then one day she called me late in the night. I said, Pastor, please thank God for my, my sister just bought an, es uh, an Escalade many years ago. I said, Thank God. After she, I, I, after she said, I said, so what concerns me with that one? 
I've been a tough man. Hey, <laughs> Jokilo, come me. Why must you call me this late? Because your sister bought a scarlet. Your family in him or dead. If all of you will be a future of me. Sister, you're like scarlet. Scarlet. I didn't have bike. I didn't have uh, bicycle. But I was so trusting in God that an escalade was nothing. I couldn't be bought. Ah, your trust in God will keep you green. Couldn't be bought. I said, eh? because Pastor Jube, thank God you came tonight. You are bringing me memories. That's how one girl. Her father said, so I have to stop dating me. They bought her a car. I said, but we never buy a car. <laughs> and the pastor said, I should marry her. Yeah, you know that if you marry her now, that means you have your first car. How can you marry a lady? Because of, uh, you are laughing now. She will wait to walk home. We want to ask her again. Leave her at the car. I told her, thank God for your car. If you want to marry him, marry him. If you don't want to marry him, when they went from nation to nation, that's what God told me. From kingdom to kingdom, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He rebuked kings for their say, Touch no man, not do my problem. I said, I'm going. She was about to break, break, break my heart, or what do they call it? <laughs> she was about to serve herself breakfast. And I knew. I took money. One thing I've promised that that week, I knew she was breaking. I bought it for her. I take now nah, law. Some of you say, ah, for the money for a bank, baby. Are you crazy? You say, check, check, please check, check, check. Every socks you bought for me, everything, please bring it. Are you crazy? Let them take it. If they take your clothes, give give them your cloak. Do you know why? They are not the one clothing you. That's a statement of trust. If they ask for your clothes, give them your vest. I need vest now. Because whatsoever goes now, I will have it in multiples. Do you have that level of trust? Because too many of us compromise on things that when we grow later, we will look at and cry. Is this what I compromised on? At now, it's looking like a tall order. Like, ah, I cannot but do this thing, but it's not true. There are shadows. They will pass. As long as say, hey, so if I don't sleep with this lady now. He's a woman. Woman. Because he got over here, he'll be in me. I love, I do me. If I do, ah, oh, Molele, oh, Molele. Check that picture in five years. Uh-uh. There used to be one girl with even me and my friend. He said, Ah, oh my, it is where one day she came to greet us. I told my friend, I said, Hmm, there's one of my daughters coming to greet me. Hmm, that girl is fine. My friend said, You as she entered the street in Abegit, my friend said, Eh, I said, But I warned you nowadays when I see the picture. She could see. But I was dutiful. I was I was dif- I was disciplined enough to remain father. I did not, I did not even know her number. When I get confused, I'll talk to her about her department. So what is your grade? <laughs> because I'm a father. I'll be like, ah, temptation, <laughs> I will just be saying, I said, what's your GPA? No, no, no. That's too low. Go and top it. Pray for you. Go in this I mind. Deliver yourself like a deer out of the hand of an hunter. And you didn't take your soul. And if you cannot deliver yourself, it's getting too much. Let her go. You will not die. You are not caring about soul. It's not soul. You are caring about your lust. All these campus people are suspicious. They are the ones bringing out this out of me. This is not in my sample. You are in part one. You have five daughters. Part one.
Calm down. I had daughter in my part one. So I had daughter. But that you already have 50. Everywhere. The people they are mentioning their name. Take it unto yourself. They are the, your friends know you. <laughs> Glory to God. I said Psalm 80. Let's read Psalm 80. Let's get let's we are true. You people like this too much. I just I remember all those uh, It's actually one of them. Even me, I felt bad when I was letting her go. It was like my future was going. I felt robbed. I felt robbed. I felt I've expended my life without any reward. I can't say something, some pulpit. This sister came to my house one night. She knew it was over. But she wanted me to have a reward. She wanted me to feel like she didn't want me to look like oh Jamie Pa. What's that English word? She didn't want me to look like she slept beside me naked the entire night. I looked at her. I said, God. I looked at her, God. I said, I told myself, I just, I chose suffering, greater treasure. My body, because, and I knew she was going, and she had defrauded me. Monetary. I know pain. I'm trying to talk to you about pain. The pain that will almost push you to sin. That you want to equalize. You want to <laughs> Credit and debit balance. It's a lie from hell. Today, they all look at me and I'm still a pastor. Because of those days where God gave me grace to do what is right. Anybody that wants to go, let them go. Your future is greater than that. My wife is here. Me, I, I would not lie to you. It was not my wife I first dated. I can't tell you the number of people I dated. So you not. There is none of them today that are not pastor. Do you know why? Because I was not over huggy. They will tell you today if there's any man of God we know, is that man. You don't get it. It's very hard for you to date somebody that didn't work and they will still trust you. Except you have worked in integrity. Because the secret between men and women is in between us, in between us. It's a lie. Anything you have agreed with somebody is in between us. Let me tell you, somebody we know. It's a matter of time. <laughs> Number one, you cannot break that heart because what is in between you will get to the field. It will become a crusade matter. Is there in between or in between? It's to keep you. I know you are. I know it was just your moment of weakness. I said, it's my moment of sin. It's not a moment of weakness. Let me go and repent. My moment of sin. Simple. In between us, in between us. Then you go and keep what they will. They go and, what are the people I'm talking here to tonight? All this in between us, in between us. I hope married people too are not doing between us, in between us. Because there are crazy things in this world today. Forget that people are coming to church. I am trying. God is my witness. To be as disciplined. Any way I cannot tell my wife I am, I can't go there. When I'm in the office, somebody comes to greet me. I'll ping my wife. Um, Fisayo is here. She came to greet me. So that because they are gossips, they will say, Ah, I tell the person near she let come. What you're going to let Joko see? And you let Joko see side one. Eh, Nicole, mutual love is a hair. And you're there, Joey Gosha. Then you will get home. She's expecting you to say that there's someone that looks like that. I came to see you. You say, Lebrocosotobo, Lebrocosotobo. Tongue, tongue. 
Do you get what I'm talking about? So when even what I used to tell my wife, I said, you would think I have mad diarrhea, but it's not mad diarrhea. And actually, Joke is coming to see me by 12. By 1230. Uh, Tunde, even guys, I tell her. No. It is it that do it evil that does not come to light. That is in, it's in between us. It's in between us. It's a trap. Okay. <laughs> I said Sameti Abi. We are Sameti. But I said, maybe we should stand on our feet. So that we can reach Sameti. Stand to your feet. Huh? You people like gist. I saw you be. I hope. Please train yourself. Let your yes be yes. Jesus said, let your yes be yes. Your nay be nay. Anything in between is evil. Oh, they define. I don't, we, we shit to you. Mm. We are just dear. You are not dear. You are a sin. It's my friend. It's my neighbor. It's my co worker. Eh? That's very serious. He don't knew. You even see it on social media. Marital status is complicated. What's complicated about marital status? I knew people I dated, and when I stopped dating them, I knew they knew. We single come on. One, I was dating her like officially, but I was close to somebody else unofficially in those days of dating. I told myself, why should I say? So I called her and I said, it's not working. Because how can you be dating somebody you are not talking to? So, cool, sing or come. Before I start talking to somebody, so that God will not be, I will not be feeling like I'm sinning. <laughs> there's no, you know. You and I know that there's nothing. So, you can go. So, I now went to sit down with myself. What's your next plan? Because this one, something is wrong with you. You are saying, I have a headache. You are talking to somebody more than your wife. It's bestie, bestie. Let a speed be a speed. Oh, I thought we are discussing grace. Why is this? Are you with me? You have brought a vine out of Egypt. He was speaking about Israel. You have cast out the nations. You have planted it. Yes. You prepared room for it. You caused it to take deep root. You f- it filled the land. What happened? The hills were covered with his shadow. The mighty cedars with his bow. He sent out her boughs to the sea and her branches to the river. Why have you broken down our edges? One of the things that will keep you great is that God will build walls around you. Know the walls, the defense systems, the places, the coverings. God has built. Don't live a life that is without boundaries. You have broken the senses. So all who pass by the way, someone say all. There are, two, there are people that accept anything is accessible to them. Anything enters them. And they listen to any preacher. So I, I just opened Facebook today. I just saw one man. He has seven dreadlock. Look to that cartoon. They cannot investigate anything that passes, enter. See, they are confused. You are broken down. So all who pass by the way pluck our fruit. Verse 13. The bow out of the woods uproot it. The wild beast of the field divorce it. All this happened because the edges of it were broken down. One of the things that dry up people when the edges around them are broken. They are not planted. They don't have structure around them. They don't have leadership. Nobody can tell them, sit down. They are always full of themselves. They will try. Very accessible to all manner of influences. Are you following me? They go out, they are like Samson. They see one girl. Say, I see one girl. It pleases me. Anything I see, it pleases me. You will start from a harmless Philistine 
to a handful Delilah by the same technology of I see something it pleases me and the first time you do it it will be harmless then the next time you do it it will require are you following me church I just want us to pray tonight for the grace to remain tender let me t- can I tell you something L- let me tell you one thing. after some time in, in Christianity let me tell you the truth there will be very few things that will shock you if you are really engaged in this thing after some years see there are some preachers that when people are shouting about them now, oh ha, I have not heard of this one when I listen to one of their sermons, I know the person who preached that sermon last 1998. But when I'm preaching, I'm But people who just got born again now will be shouting. After some years, very few things can take you by surprise. Most of you have not gotten there. I'm telling you the truth. If you think you have gotten there, you're not getting there. And the danger is that you can get to a point where you can tell yourself there is nothing new. Everything is predictable. All churches want to grow. Whether they call themselves Reformation, Evangelica, Anglica, they want their facilities filled. Isn't it? Is it new? I told somebody one recent discovery of growth. There is no movement in this world where money does not have power. Ah, oh, so we are the righteousness of God. We are brethren. We are the one we will know the people that have money. Even in the Bible, the first person the apostles gave a nickname Barnabas, son of consolation, he sold land. But money can take the Barnabas description in our midst, or it can take the Ananas and Sapphira description, which means it will become the foundation of lies and false perception. And it can, at the other hand, become the foundation of care and service. But that money will not have influence is a lie. I don't know whether you get it. I say it's a lie. It will. So it's ah, our own church, you know, in my own church. Um, we are different. All those we are different that we used to say. One day you just discover that what you think you are different from, you are doing. When people want to start ministry, it's interdenominational. Anybody is free. Anybody can join. One day you are suddenly suddenly discover that. Why did you not come to fellowship? I thought it was interdenominational. The person went back to their denomination, but now you are ready. Well, you know, territoriality will come. Because it has its positives and it has its negatives. You are the one that will watch by the tenderness of your heart that it is that the negatives of it will not take over your heart, but that it will not come. You are wasting your time. The child will come, money will come. Are you, are you following me? When the number of disciples increased, what happened? There arose a memory. Hey! Our, church, our pastor is orderly. Our church is uh, apostolic. They will murmur there. Pastor like he, it will happen. I said, me, I'm a pastor. I don't show partiality. They will still tell you. Sir, I show partiality. Deep yourself in the Niger and Jordan that I will escape it. I am telling you, they will tell you that you are partial. You can't run from it. Even Jesus couldn't run from it. So it's not. But why? Thank you, sir. I'm sorry. Why are we not moved by these things? We have kept our eyes on the Lord. Where we keep drawing life. So the more these times are, is trying to sap life from us, the more of the life of God is released to us. That's what keeps us smiling. We are wounded, but we are smiling. We bless death that causes us. Because the life flow that is entering us 
is more than what the enemy is trying to pull from us. There is no cause in us. Are you following me? Lift your hands tonight. And just talk to God. To keep you tender. For new things, new levels of understanding to begin to emerge. Till Jesus come, offenses will not cease. Will not cease. Said I've said to thee, this one cannot be my yeah. Where is a new thing? Where what new phase of your life is a tender shoot growing? I know you are president. I know you are ESCO. I know you are this. I know you are house fellowship leader. What I'm asking is, what is he saying to you now? It can include what is he instructing you. It can mean what is he correcting. It can mean what is he adjusting. But there must be something he is trying to achieve. Because that's growth. Some of you is changing your attitude to your in-law. It's changing and you can't do anything. It's that like you will love them. You will love them. Some of you is telling you will be more quiet. Every time they are fighting, you keep quiet. And everything about you is reacting. But that's your growth. That's your growth. And as we keep trusting him, In Jesus' name we pray. This is, this is a balance between well-established positions and new things God is trying to do. And I'm not saying you are going to leave because the twig, we need the established uh, stem to remain in place. But the stem, we need the twig to grow. It must be something that has a very powerful relationship next us for the tree to grow properly. You are not just somebody that changes your mind every five, five minutes, but you are still somebody that is open. I, I, am, I making, am I making sense? You are, you are, it's not like everything that comes you accept. You must have some some root. Not moved by every wind of doctrine. But yet knowing that we know in part. We prophesy in part. So you are more willing to hear. Even though you are not moved by every dog. I don't know how you can achieve this except the Holy Spirit does it. There are people that the first day I listen to them, I don't agree with them. But you may not, you will not hear that I have disagreements with them for five years. I'm tender enough to see what God wants to train me wit in their life I don't want to win an argument I want to get what I need to learn you don't get it Pastor Jubert knows me <laughs> there was one that Pastor Jubert used to refer to there's a man of God in Nigeria that's very controversial I don't know whether he's even a man of God it's as serious for that too then one some years ago I was traveling to preach in Lagos so I branched somewhere and I saw people discussing about this man. And the people who were discussing about it were the Christians who are getting degenerated. Oh, is it not our type that is using the, 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 the way everybody talks? I weighed that guard. I discovered that that conversation they had was not fruitful. That the man that I judge is even better than as much as I disagree with man. If you see the way I entered into a debate with these guys, then, are you the one that called? If I say, hey, the two of you are doing the same thing, I say, yes, we are doing the same thing. Yes. They, called, they just called the man with the woman that time. I said, yes, we are doing the same thing. But I knew the people who were judging him were worse. And I knew at that time that they were destroying something more than what they were trying to defend. The way I stood against them, the conclusion they had is that me and that man were in a pact. They don't know me and me. 
the man, when he hears my name, he goes like this. I go like this. Many years ago, one of my people wanted to marry in his church. As he got to his front for cancer, he said, which church do you attend? He said, I said, who is your pastor? He said, Pastor, said, pastor Mu. Oh, Pastor Mu. Uh, greeting for me. That was the end of the cancer. He didn't want Wahala. <laughs> oh, Wahala. But that was, it was not an opportunity for me now to, to crush him and side lies because I disagree with somebody. I'm still tender enough to know. See, I, I'm tender enough to know that I can take the jug of Saul, but I cannot kill him. I take the jug, water jug to show him I came to your cave. But I cannot kill the lost anointed and be guiltless. Two things happen at the same time. Proving that I love you, yet not taking vengeance in my hand. Are you following me? Only God can establish that balance. Lord, between the things you have taught me and the things you are teaching me, let me be able to transit between them properly. The things I've learned and the things you are showing. The things I've learned and the things you are showing. Some of the things you are learning now will change your definitions about things you have learned before. Yes. In Jesus' name. At the beginning of the year, I called Pastor Jubei. I said, Pastor Jubei, God told me that I have to work with people that I don't like. God said, whether you like it or not, they are your people. You know them, you can disagree with them, but you will work with them. I said, okay. I'm not forcing it, but I'm not closed. And it does not mean I agree with everything they are doing. I don't belong to any circle. May you learn wisdom. So, what, they told me what one counsel Pastor Bakari gave somebody to me. Say, Pastor Bakari, look at that person and say, You are the new face of apostolic reformation in Nigeria. But don't ever let anybody call you that name. He has learned by experience that those names limit you. He sat the man that was talking from his mind, from his heart. He said, I made too many unnecessary enemies for nothing's sake. May you be wise in your youth Amen. that our children will be fully grown in their youth. They will be youth, they will be grown. They will be tender, they will be steady. Uh, that is what God wants in us. Establishment but yet steadiness, tenderness. Lord, open my heart to your Holy Spirit. Make me tender, make me sensitive to your trainings, to your corrections, to your reproof, to your instructions. Just pray for yourself tonight. Just pray for yourself tonight. This is the pathway of growth. Make me, Lord, open. Let me be steady and let me at the same time be tender. Let me be tender. Let me be tender. Let me be tender. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. If you look at trees, those parts of the tree that give them strength, that toughen them, they are mostly the dead part of the tree. They are dry. But the ones that supply life, they are moist. They are fresh because that's where growth is. So the tree keeps the ones that give it width, they don't necessarily have much life. Are you following me? But they give it the strength because they are covered by the part that has life. Are you following me? So tonight, all I want you to know. Is that God has called you here to be alive. To him. Sensitive to him. Yet established with principles. Can I shock some of you? God will use people you don't like. I hope you are tender enough. Can I shock some of you? 
some of the sinners you know today are the mamas of tomorrow and there's nothing you can do about it it's grace of god and you must be tender enough to receive it when it comes because it's not by merit it's by choice he said well lord how can you choose this person one day god appeared to ananias go pray for saul he said saul that one is a sinner god said there's a tender shoot away from what you have now learned from me i will show you how many things he will suffer for he's a chosen vessel that silence and denial he forgot what he knew he started following what god is showing when you relate with people may god give you capacity to stop knowing them from their past and from what people told you how many people are you fighting in this world not because you know them but because somebody said that brother don't try him up that pastor very proud when you come there lift your hearts to god and thank him because he's visiting you with tenderness there's growth are you blessed tonight lift your hands and give him praise you will forgive people anybody that left you is because it's not good enough for your future telling you and you go back to them and bless them yes you bless them you bless them you bless them you counsel them i'm not telling you things i've not done people there are people here who tell you and sometimes they cannot even reconcile how i do it and i'll still go to them and bless and i was somebody came to me this week i was talking to me about a ministry somebody that did something very grievous to me recently and he was talking to me he said you know i want to be giving him support and this 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 i had the chance if i looked at that person I said, you can't that's not the ministry to support that would be the end of that thing but i told myself he will never hear anything from my mouth when he said i want to I said, that's a good person to support those are choices because i want to remain then i don't want to use and god said so this is the way you'll be using power Somebody wants to bless somebody that is wounding me and I told the person. And the person is seeking my permission to do it. And I did not talk. You don't understand. And I said, that's a good person to support. Because even if I don't agree with him, I agree with his mission. You don't get it. And you know what I was doing? I was telling God, you see now, I will not use authority wrongly so that you can trust me with what you want to do in my life. That's what I was telling him. I won't use it. If nobody was there, I, I see you are not the one that will not tell me to talk behind you. You cannot kill me. What I will not say, I will not say because I am tender to God. Why, how do I weigh my decisions? The imprint of God's hand on my heart. Are you following me? That's the way to live. And the one who sees in secret, what will he do? He will reward you in the Lift your hands and give God praise tonight. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say I'm growing because I'm alive and I'm flourishing.